Kenobi. Kenobi! Hey everybody, I'm Rob Easterling. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a good day because I'm about to paint four miniatures again from the core box of Shatterpoint Star Wars. This is a miniature skirmish game and the squad today we're going to be looking at is what I call the Vengeance Squad. It has Darth Maul, it has two Mandalorian Commandos and Gar Saxon Mandalorian as well. And we're starting off with an interesting kind of way of painting these. So let's get to the table and may the paint bewitch you. Alright, so we're starting off with the Mandalorian Commandos here. They were primed in matte black, and there's going to be no Zenithal, no Slap Chop in here, no anything like that, no other prep work to be done. We're going to go straight off a of black primer, which is something I've rarely done on the channel, so this is going to be quite interesting. Plus, most of these um, Mandalorians here and Darth Maul and that are all wearing pretty much black armor or black outfits or have mostly black in the miniature. Uh, so it's gonna be one a time saver to get through the mini really quickly because I'm not gonna be using really speed paints. I will at one point, you're gonna see what I'm gonna be using which is cool on a black paint. I never thought it would work but it really turns out looking really cool actually. And so we're going back to the old Army Painter War Paints. They've just announced recently about their War Paints Fanatics which means another 216 paints I'm probably gonna have to buy at some point. So if you want, you can join my channel now. Memberships are up uh, and uh, for one monthly low cost, you can become an Easterlinger, yeah, and have some cool emojis and badges and stuff like that. Get priority replies in your comments. Anyways, uh, so I figured, you know, with the new Fanatics paint coming out in 2024, we're getting close to that, so we might as well use some of their old paints and see how they still work, because I rarely use them anymore. I'm mostly into the air paints and the speed paints. So Vampire Red is our first one here on these two Mandalorian Commandos, doing some of the armor, and as you can see, I've really uh, gotten them lightened down, uh, or thinned down, I should say, and to the fact that like they just go on very nice as a glaze, and you can go on with a second coating if you want to make them a little brighter, but I'm gonna do that with a different color afterwards. This was pretty much just like a base coat. Um, under dark, or sorry, yeah, under dark gray, is one of Army Painter's D&D bottles. Now, recently the D&D bottles are now found with Vallejo, I believe, because Army Painter came out with their own Game Master series instead. So I guess they had the license for D&D, and it got changed to another company. I mean, that happens, right, in the painting world? I'm sure of it. Uh, so anyways, again, I am doing four miniatures in this video. I don't know if it's too long. I don't know if it's a good idea. Do you like the squads? Or would you like to see each miniature painted individually as its own video? Please comment down below, okay? Hit the comment button. That means you've, if you're not commenting, that's because you didn't read or listen to this part. Not read. You didn't listen to this part of the video where I'm asking you to comment below what you like. Xenos Carapace, all right, so this is a beautiful light, light, light grayish blue, which I'm doing a dry brush on the top parts of some of the armor of these Mandalorians because they had this grayish blue and I did not want to do edge highlighting on everything. Now, my mistake was I should have done this first and then come around with the red paint and the other colors I was doing because it kind of might have hit some of the spots. Didn't know what I was really doing here, but it gives them a nice grayish silver blue, almost like a non-metallic metal, which is really cool. And that Xenos Carapace, by the way, is a uh, is a pure color or whatever, like um, uh, its own color from the Zombicide Invader paint set. So I thought it was close to wolf gray, but it's not even. It's actually quite different. And an older video, uh, which you take a look on my community tab today, I will have a throwback video. I don't know if it's going to be that one, but I'll have some older video that people probably didn't watch or haven't had a chance to watch. And I'm going to show you guys how I painted it. If you haven't seen that video, go take a look at my community tab, and that'll be showing up. So when I was talking about that vampire garments a while ago, I'm using now Mars Red uh, to make it pop a little bit more the armor and have a little bit more to it. But once again, I'm not trying to make this miniature complicated. I'm trying to make it as easy as possible, and that's why I actually used the matte black. And now I'm dry brushing uh, their jetpacks with some plate mail metal, uh, just to make them shine a bit. I also hit the guns a little bit there as well. And now I'm gonna be doing all that smoke uh, that's coming out of the jetpack of the flying Mandalorian, which is gonna be with ash gray. 
And again, the bottle's showing it as a darker gray, and when you paint it, it's almost white. It's just so weird how sometimes the bottle, even the paint in the bottle, so I don't know if it's their bottles or whatever, so I'm, look, I'm hoping that Army Painter, you've listened, you said what you're doing with your paints, but do something with your bottles and the, the actual labels, because it's misleading when you're thinking you're painting with a certain color, and then you end up painting something either really light or much darker, or the complete off color because like even uh was it uh, field gray is green it's not even gray it's field gray but it's greenish but you and you can't tell with the bottle nor the sticker anyways just you know just telling it's talking out loud here fire lizard now we're gonna be doing the uh, flames coming out of the actual jetpack here but again another color that looks more orange and not yellow I don't understand this. Look at the bottle on the left-hand side. Anyways, okay, so there you go. The Mandalorian Commandos, they are painted and ready for the skirmish table game of Shatterpoint. And uh, I did add a little bit of orange to the flames on the outside afterwards, and just to fix that up. Now we're moving on to Gar Saxon, who also was primed in a matte black primer. No Zenithal, no Slap Chop, right off the bottle. And this is going to be another miniature that's great to paint. Uh, yeah, so we're starting off with some filthy cape. Again, here we go again. Another color that's supposed to be really dark. Okay, I don't mind it being lighter because the the, the horns on his helmet were supposed to be a little lighter. They're kind of representative of Darth Maul. Uh, so, and because Darth Maul is in his squad, so it kind of fits with it as well. They look more like bones than anything else. But again, the filthy cape should have been a little darker, but it comes out much lighter than I wanted. However, when I start, like, and so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do the edge highlighting on some of the areas of the raised areas of the pants and the shirt and some of the armor and all that well mostly just the pants and the shirts and i didn't want to paint the whole thing in this at first i was like oh maybe i should paint the whole thing in that color but then i was like no no i'm just gonna do some highlights on them here and there i'm also gonna do um some parts of the gun with it so like instead of doing metallic parts on these guns i'm gonna use this uh filthy cape uh but again it was like way too light and so i'm really starting to get kind of annoyed with the old war paints and I have to try and find a way to remember what these colors do but I mean it's hard to do that unless you paint them on top of I think black primer is the best to paint them over because it really shows their true colors uh, and if you paint over white I think it's gonna lighten them down even more next we're going with matte white now we know what we're getting out of this bottle we're getting white okay and I'm doing this inside the visor part of uh, the helmet here because I wanted it to be uh, bright for the color I'm gonna put on later and I'm also going to put this on the flames coming out of his jetpack because I want also that to be bright with what I'm going to be using later on. Uh, and instead of doing OSL, which would have been white with the airbrush and then the fluorescent color I was going to use, I just decided to brush on that color later on. And you're going to see that it does a pretty good job, which is actually right now because I let that white dry. Don't worry, it's not like automatic. Please let the white dry quite a bit before doing this or else you're just going to smudge that white all over. So I'm using Safety Orange, which is an air fluorescent paint and uh, really doing a good job because I left some of the black in the in the recesses so it really has a darker and lighter effect and in the visor it hits a bit of the edge which I'm going to cover up later on with these vampire garments and by the way I said vampire garments well but it was vampire red now it's vampire garments uh, it's complicated sometimes and yet it is a different kind of red you know I always look at the their paints when they come up with like a different paint range like the zombie side invader or green horde one they had a black plague they had the zombie side 2.01 they had the D&D stuff I always look at army painters they have a list that compares them to their original war paints to know if the color is unique or not this is not a unique color so you have another red to work with and this was kind of annoying at some points when army painter came out with all these different paint ranges that they had unique colors that they weren't going to bring back into another bottle so i'm wondering if in the fanatics box or set they're going to have like something like this vampire garments and vampire red are they going to be back there i'd have to go look at their page and see what they're going to have Anyways, uh, if you haven't heard about that, I don't know where you've been living, but yeah, Army Painter's coming out with some new paints. Go take a look at their website. And again, like, you know, I'm not a big YouTube channel. I don't have a lot of say, but I find my opinion could count too as much for the little guys. And I paint a lot with their paints. I am an Army Painter painter. I don't paint with Citadel paints at all. I got rid of all my contrast paints. I don't use Vallejo paints. Sometimes once in a blue moon, I have some Vallejo paints. Any other paints I don't have either, I just stick to Iron Painter because I found that they were the ones that got me into the hobby. They were the cheapest to buy at the time. 
and uh, they were available pretty much anywhere whereas a lot of the other stuff like green stuff world ak uh, those kind of paints are not easily accessible in canada everywhere unless you order them uh across the seas or even down from the states some stores are starting to get them more hobby stores are starting to get these paints but uh if they're not much in demand then you know they won't be used as much all right, we're coming back to the underdark gray again that we're using here that we used on the pants from the first one, uh, first Mandalore. Now we're using on the smoke because we're making his smoke a little bit darker and we're going to also make it uh, a little bit brighter later on. We're going to do some uh, edge highlighting on his smoke. Now, here's where I was saying you use a speed paint on top of black primer and I'm using a metallic broadsword silver. It's darker silver, but you know what? On top of the black primer, it does a great job of doing the shadow effect, whereas on a white primer, it doesn't do as much so it's really good on here so i'm using the ash gray on uh the smoke as well just doing some highlighting on that smoke to keep that the darker recesses there but i kind of cover up all the underdark gray by accident kind of thing but it, it still works out i mean it's still i'm trying to do i should dry brush technically on top of it and now i'm using the worst paint in army painter history is bay blonde it's horrible even if you mix it for hours it's just horrible and i come back fix it all up with the 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 the, the, the thrusters here because it, it's just horrible so now gar saxon is painted and now we're moving on to one of the cool minis here darth maul he's in the core box as well so all these miniatures are from the core blocks core box he was given a highlight of raven black okay this is an air paint so i went on top of that just because i noticed that he had a little bit of a less black tint to him uh, his robes and that and th this raven black kind of has a hint of gray and then when you go from the top it creates a nice shadow effect underneath uh, there isn't much to paint on this guy and what we're doing is we're starting off with some matte white on the lightsaber because we want that to really dry so that when we get to the lightsaber painting later the color I put on really pops and makes it really nice now we're going into details on this guy at least thank god he has the recesses in this miniature this is how detailed they are you don't have to freehand all his face markings and the chest markings in red and I'm using pure red for this one and what, like I said, it, they have the actual like etching in the face, so you have something to work with. And on the chest as well, you have like the engravings, like you have indents of where you're supposed to paint this part of the miniature. So really well thought of Atomic Mass games. Again, I am super impressed with this game. Love playing it, even though I have not won a single game because me strategy wise, I am not great at it. Uh, but just an amazing skirmish game super easy some people don't like it, but i love this game i'm really into it it's great skeleton bone now for the spikes on his head you would think this would be super easy to paint right but those spikes are so tiny uh that is you gotta use a really small brush make sure you don't hit anything else i hit the black at one point but what's fun is i just come back with some matte black or even the raven black i could have used i used some matte black but it just blended in to recover up the mistake i made and this is one good thing about using a color primer that you're going to have as a base coat technically and this just saves you more time when you're painting your miniatures and this is what this channel is about you don't want to spend six hours on a miniature and again i'm sorry if it's taking longer for my miniatures to come out, like especially when I do these squads. So my videos take a little bit longer to come out. Uh, also, I can't paint as much as I used to. I'd love to be able to paint like a full squad in one day and have the video ready for you guys the same day and work on it. But I just can't uh, physically do that. And so I try my best to bring out these to you. Again, if you're listening to the video throughout, you know that I asked you guys to comment about something. So go ahead and comment that down below. Do you want full squad painting like this? Do you like this idea of the full squads and then just having the timestamps of which miniature you want to look at? Or should I have individual videos of each miniature from Shatterpoint? Let me know in the comments and I will listen to you guys. If most of you say one thing, I will probably end up going that way. So, and don't just say, oh, do what you want. No, no, here, I want to hear from my viewers. You guys are important to me, and you guys have subscribed for a reason. All right, we're going on to uniform gray now. We're doing this on uh, some of the edge highlighting here. You can see, again, I use a metallics paint, speed paint on his legs, but this time was the polished silver, and it really brought out the legs and his lightsaber on that. Now I'm just doing some edge highlighting on all his outfit, his hood, and all that with this uniform gray just to make him pop a little bit more because the raven black did a good job of creating that shadow effect sort of it wasn't too too nuts because the next one was crow hue and i think that would have been too light but just having a dusting of raven black just makes it that all that miniature part i didn't have to paint 
Slaughter red is our final color. We're putting on a lightsaber. Yes, it's a darker red, but I find light, uh, Darth Maul's lightsaber has always been more like a darker red. And I just find that you don't have to have white showing up too much there. And there you have it, uh, Lord Maul from the core box of Atomic Mass's game Shatterpoint is all painted. So this squad, which I call the Vengeance Squad, is all painted as well. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I want to thank you guys for watching, and may the paint be with you.